Hey guys, it's Andrea from the blog Pine and Prospect Home, and today I want to show you guys the DIY desk built-in that we created using a hand-me-down desk and file cabinet from my parents. So I would love to reveal the entire sunroom to you, but we're waiting on a few more things before I can show you the other half of the room with the window seat that we built. I'm so excited to show that to you, hopefully at the end of this week or maybe early next week, we'll see. But today I just want to talk to you about the wall you see behind me, the DIY desk built-in, and how we sort of put it together. I thought I would walk you through it, and hopefully this will give you some inspiration if you're looking to do something similar in your home. Alright, so I already said this in the blog post, but I just want to point out that every space is different. What we did here could be completely different than what, you know, you do in your home. So as far as measurements and things like that, I didn't really want to go into that many details with it. I'm just sort of going to explain to you how we made this whole thing look built in as opposed to a desk and a cabinet just sitting up against the wall. So um, in my last video that I shared of the sunroom, I showed you a desk and a file cabinet that my parents gave me. And I don't know where they came from. I know they've had them for a very long time. In fact, I think someone gave those to my parents. And my parents are redoing their office space right now, giving it a little makeover. And they asked me if I wanted these. And actually, when they first sent me a picture of them, I almost told my mom no, because I just didn't really have a space for them. I couldn't really think of where I would use them. And then I started thinking about it, and we don't really have a great office space in our home. In fact, a lot of times I do my blog work just on the couch or at the dining room table or upstairs in bed at night, and I've never really had a designated workspace. And so I started to think about it, and I was looking at the picture, looking at the picture, and for some reason, I had this memory of my friend Amanda's home over at Sincerely Marie Designs. I will put a link to her blog in the description below if you wanna check out her beautiful home. She made over her office last fall, and she has this shelf above her desk area with corbels that look very similar to the shelf and corbels that I had in my sunroom. And so it just, out of nowhere, inspiration struck and I thought, wow, our sunroom might be the perfect space for a little office area. I've never had one before. I would love to have a space that I can go to and work, keep all of my blogging equipment, everything that I need um, for painting and crafts, just all in one space instead of scattered all throughout the house. So that's how this whole idea came about. And um, we took the desk and the file cabinet and brought them in the sunroom. And initially, what was here when we moved in was a giant orange closet that we ripped out and we put a little bench seat, but that bench seat was just not used a whole lot. So we decided to tear that out and instead put the desk and file cabinet here. And they weren't quite long enough to fill the entire space from the window wall to the edge of the French doors. So we had to do a little bit of tweaking and that's what I thought I would explain to you guys in this video. Now, you might already be thinking, well, of course, obviously, she built this for less than $50. She got the desk and the cabinet for free. But I just want to I just want to say that I always see desks and file cabinets all the time on Facebook Marketplace. I see them at thrift stores all the time. And you know, garage sale season is coming up. So, I just wanted to point that out because I know that that's probably a huge part of the cost if you're looking to do something like this. And the fact that we got ours for free is amazing. So that saved us a ton of money. But like I said, so the desk and cabinet were quite long enough to fit this entire space behind me. So my husband did a little bit of work. He looked um, through sort of our scrap wood pile and he ended up finding some sheets of hard wood. It's like a four by eight sheet of wood and it's, it has a smooth surface to it. And he used that to create sort of this connection between the top of the file cabinet and the desk. So he laid it right on top of the file cabinet and nailed it in with his finish nailer. And then he did that same thing with that same scrap wood to create some shelving in between the desk and the file cabinet. So that's how we sort of 
connected the two pieces and made them look like one unit. Now, that was just one part of the project. We had another issue because the desk had to be sort of a little bit off the wall because we have a heater right underneath the desk on that wall and we didn't want to block that off. And so the desk had to sit away from the wall a couple of inches. So we also used that same wood to create sort of just a filler piece um, behind the desk. And he also used that wood to create this sort of little ledge for me that I can put, you know, mason jars with paintbrushes or pencils or whatever. Once all of these little pieces were sort of put together, we stepped back and we looked at the desk and we thought, you know, this would look much more substantial and built in if it had some baseboard around the base of the desk and file cabinet. So he went to work again and he took some one by sixes actually and cut them to fit around the base of the desk and also around the base of the file cabinet. So after he tweaked all the wood to sort of fit together like a puzzle to make this thing look like one unit, that's where I come in. So he does all the construction, I come in and do sort of a lot of the finish work. And I went through with some spackling, filled all the nail holes, every crack and seam I filled with caulk and I just had, I had to do a lot of caulking. Um, my husband has this motto, it's do your best and caulk the rest. <laughs> and so that's kind of what we go by, especially in an old home like this when there are no straight lines, everything is sort of sagging and, and so caulk is a very close friend of ours, let me just put it that way. So I did all of that and then it was time to sand everything down. So I just used some, I want to say like 100 grit sandpaper just to sand down the desk because it had a really glossy finish on it. And of course I wanted to sand down all of the spackling as well just to make sure everything was nice and smooth for the paint. Once everything was sanded and cleaned, I went in and primed the entire desk unit uh, with one of my favorite primers. I will link that below for you. And of course my favorite booster brush. I will put a link for that brush. I love that brush with a little rubber handle. It's the best brush. And I just gave everything a coat of primer and after a couple of days of just really allowing that to dry and cure, I went in with my paint. And the paint was definitely a bold decision for me. I was so conflicted. I didn't know if I should paint it all white. I was very torn. And I ended up going with a color called Stone Hearth by Benjamin Moore. And I just had this color matched at our hardware store. I didn't go to an actual Benjamin Moore store. I don't have one of those near me. And so that's what I always do when I find a color that I really love. I just have my hardware store match it. Um, but I put a little bit of paint on the desk, loved it immediately. So I started off by just painting the desk and the file cabinet. And for some reason, some part of me just wanted to keep going up with the color. I thought if I went up with the color all the way up the wall, it would really just make this entire unit feel just very cohesive. If you follow me on Instagram, um, so many of you guys were following along in stories. I was kind of sharing the progress with you and a lot of you agreed to go all the way up with the color and I'm so glad that I did. I feel like it looks so beautiful all the way up the wall. And I just wanna say that I'm still playing around with decor. Obviously everything is closed here still. I can't do a lot of shopping. Not that I think that you need to go shopping immediately after finishing a space like this. I don't think so at all. I think it's important to shop your home first, see what you have, see what works, and um, and then at that point you can kind of figure out, okay, what, what do I really need? So for example, in this space, I already had those metal tin containers on the shelf and I liked them before. Now I'm not 100% sure about them, but I think it's important to sort of live with them for a while, see how they work, see you know how you feel about them, and then maybe you can start looking for something different if you feel like they aren't working in your space. I don't have a whole lot going on on my desk right now. Everything that I have sort of added to the desk area, I just, it felt busy, it felt cluttered, I like a clean surface. I have been painting a lot lately. If you follow me on Instagram, I share in my stories all the time my paintings. And so 
I just, I like a lot of room to work. So everything is very simple right now and very clean and that's okay with me. Um, I don't think that I, I need a lot of decor right here. I like a clean surface to work on. So anyways, I overall, I really love this space. Uh, the chair, again, is a chair that I already had. It's not super comfortable. I would probably like something a little more comfy. In fact, I'm thinking about making a cushion for the chair and that might help a little bit. But um, yeah, so far, so far I really love how this desk unit came together. I mean, it's more beautiful than I ever could have imagined. I don't know if you guys saw my vision when I shared it at first, but hopefully you can understand now sort of what my plan was to begin with. So I have to share with you guys one of the coolest things about this desk, and my husband came up with it all on his own. <laughs> he is so clever. But when we tore out the bench seat in here, um, we discovered an outlet inside the bench, which was so perfect for this wall because, you know, it's an office space, I need to charge my laptop, my phone, my camera, battery, whatever. So the only issue is that we were going to cover that outlet back up with this whole unit that we were building. So my husband came up with the idea of bringing a power strip up from that outlet and attaching it right underneath the side of the desk so it was sort of hidden and then he also created this little piece of wood that's velcroed into place so that if I ever decide that I want to put a lamp here or if I have extra cords that need to be plugged in we can easily take that wood piece off and you know add more cords down to that plug but i just thought that was so clever the the power strip is velcroed on as well so i have lots of plugs for different things to be able to charge them a few days ago i was in here organizing everything with my son gabriel and um i'm just i'm just so excited about this space and having a place where i can go to to work and be creative i'm thinking about putting an easel next to the desk that looks outside. There's just so much inspiration when you come out here because this room just fills with light, especially in the afternoon. It's just like a breath of fresh air coming out here. And I can't wait to show you the other side of the room. I am so excited. We have to put up one more sconce and then I'm waiting for a rug to arrive, but I cannot wait to show you guys the whole sunroom reveal, how it all came together and actually really came together a lot faster than I thought it would. So I hope you enjoyed this DIY desk built in and I hope it inspired you in some way. Maybe if you're looking to create something similar, I just love the way it turned out. My husband did such a good job and I'm so thankful for him. I always get so many comments about how amazing my husband is and believe me, I know he really is. He doesn't think he is, um, but he is. So. I guess that's what makes him so special is how humble he is. I have been asking him to do a Q&A video with me, so if you have any questions for him, please let me know. He's camera shy, he doesn't like he doesn't like this sort of thing, so I don't know if I'll ever convince him, but I think it would be fun to sit down with him and do a video one of these days, we'll see. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, if you're new to my channel, please be sure and hit that subscribe button. See you next time guys, bye bye.